Hey, this is Lorena, and I wanted to do a long arm quilting work day. Yep, it's another work day. Um, I've had several different types of work days, so I did like a job for a vinyl and for some embroidery, but today is a quilting work day, and I thought you might like to come with me. This quilt is a bit different than other quilts because this is um, kind of involves some of my embroidery work days that I've been doing. This client asked me to embroider several panels and logos on fabric to create this beautiful, beautiful, sweet quilt. And so come along and see my process and yes, let's get working. <laughs> yeah, come on, let's go. All right, are you coming? <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> Goofy dog. Okay. Uh, I got batting. It was on sale. I have a whole bunch of king size batting. I got full and queen because I ran out of queen. And I don't like cutting up king size batting for a king or queen. So, this is not enough. It's a cheaper uh, batting, but it quilts really pretty. It almost quilts like a warm and natural, even though it's not a warm and natural. I haven't worked in several days because I've been doing different type of work. I've been working up here. So, I was gonna work on this quilt several days ago and life just gets in my way. This is, <clears throat> yeah. So, warm and natural, full size or Pelon, it's a, it says that it is, it's 93% cotton, 7% poly. Scrim, 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 scrim. Yeah, so, cotton shrinks. So I, it was on sale 40% off and I got 15% off military discount, which was that. So, I told the client I would have this done yesterday. Pull it down. She said I had to the end of the month. <laughs> and today's the 30th, so it's kind of still the end of the month. <laughs> I know. I'm cutting it close, but that's kind of part of my life right now. So, I'm gonna be quilting this quilt. This is a client of mine, her name is Dee. I do these quilts often for her, and really they're just embroidered quilts. I embroider certain things on the quilt and, or blocks, and she turns it into a quilt, and she does like, like this is dedicated for this wonderful lady. Her name is Judy. She was a lunch teacher, lunch lady. And she was the lunch lady for our district for like 40 years, so I thought it was kind of cool. And so I did the logo of all the schools to kind of, um, in all the years that she worked in those schools, to kind of commemorate her labor for the school district. She's retiring apparently this year, so um, the, my lady, Miss D, wanted to make her a quilt top to honor her service. So let me show you. All right, she wanted a rose, a flower design on here. You know what kind of sucks about being up here? It's like my battery is going out on this thing. I should have gotten the other battery and I didn't. But now I gotta go with these. <laughs> so I'm gonna just get it ready. <laughs> Try to hold it as long as I can. So if you can't see me wiggling, you know why I'm wiggling. <laughs> um, so yeah, I should have gone before I came up here. But let me get it ready. Yeah, I already picked the design. Ugh, why? There's no bobbin in here. So I'll go downstairs in a minute and get another battery for you, lovely people. <laughs> and then.
So this is what the quilt looks like. It has like uh, steel. I did love those for the school district here. Then Chicken Nugget Monday. <laughs> Only like um, she did, I'll get better pictures of this. Clemens, she worked there 25 years. Corbett, which is the middle school over here. And then um, she worked there six. Pasquale, she worked there too. And then it's like Hamburger Friday. And then I love the center, but we'll see it better. It says Mrs. Judy, 40 years. Uh, the school district that she did the work for. And then pizza, Wednesday pizza. And then I love this logo. Rose Garden logo. Shoot, that's another school. I think that's a little laundry. And so this is a sweet little quilt. Um, so you don't have to be a piecer. You could do embroidery quilts. I think this is pretty. So let me iron real quick. Be careful with red fabric that's connected to white. If you spray starch it, <laughs> the red, if it's not washed, it could bleed into the white, and so we don't want to do that. So I just kind of like steamed it. This is the design I got. Isn't that beautiful? It's just roses. She loves flowers. And then she put roses in the back fabric. So sometimes picking a design is really simple. Find the fabric the client picked, and then find a design that has, um, kind of like coordinates with, so it had roses here, so I got her, or for the quilting. I'm using a really light thread. It's a variegated, ooh, I like it. Real pretty light, kind of variegated thread. So this is a beautiful thread. Look how pretty that looks. I don't know if you can see it. Mm -hmm. Look how pretty that stick is. I need to straighten that. Do you see it? Always look at your horizontal lines. Because it looks straight from here. But then when you look at the horizontal line, so cat scratch. <laughs> cat scratch it down. And sometimes, it's something like so simple, right? But you don't want it to quilt that way. So let's see. It looks a bit better. Let me strain it. Ugh. that I put on the back on the table with, let me show you, just two two by fours. So here's the mirror and it tucks in to the very edge area right here to the table. I should just get a new one, that one's gross, but this is what I have right now. I was gonna buy another one, I'm like, nah, I have this one, it's fine. Um, I cleaned it already and the reason you wanna do that is so you can see the stitches underneath. So I have it this way. This way you can see the stitches underneath. I don't know if you see that. And it can go right underneath the long arm. So you could kind of, and you could do like more mirrors. I just do this one and just slide it across the table. And you can see um, the quilting. It just kind of glides underneath the table. And when you look down, you could see, you could really see the quilting a lot better. And the machine, it doesn't get in the way, but I don't know if you can see it. All right, let's talk about a communication mistake. <laughs> When the client dropped off the quilt to me, and I wish, sometimes I think, I'm so comfortable with some of my clients, I don't think certain things through. I wish I would've wrote it down, um, had her 
fill my paperwork and sign it. But because of COVID, it's kind of changed some things. My clients are just dropping off stuff. And she communicated to me quickly with her mask on that, hey, can you add the border? Well, if a client asks me to add a border, she says, I already cut the pieces, just put it on. Usually, you know, I know how to do borders. It's not a big deal. I don't ask any other questions. But assumingly, she told me in that conversation that she wanted me to finish the quilt completely, like she didn't want to deal with it anymore. And so if you add the border, you're still not finished with the quilt. So there's just like, anyway. So I went ahead and with the fabric that she left me, I added this beautiful, pretty green material as a border. Well, when I sent her the pictures when the quilt was done and I trimmed it, the, I want you to be finished with it, I don't want to deal with it anymore, it was like resonating in my soul and talking to me and repeating itself to me. And I go, well, maybe she wanted me to do the binding too. Now, if she would have said, can you do the binding? I would have asked her two questions. Do you want me to sew the binding on? Meaning you'd make the binding and then sew it with the sewing machine and close it that way. Or do you want me to hand stitch the binding? And usually I don't do a lot of binding for clients. One, because I don't like it. Two, because it's just a lot of quilters or piecers. They know how to do binding themselves and they don't want to pay me to do it, you know? And so, um, when I ended up in this whole conversation, she's like, well, what did you do with the green fabric? And I go, well, uh, I made it as a border. <laughs> so I sent her this picture to let her understand what I did, because she kind of like, uh, 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 what happened? <laughs> and I said, you told me to put on the border. And she's like, no, I already put a border on. Uh, that's not what I wanted and so I showed her a picture now that I understand what she wanted She wanted me to use that fabric as the binding I went downstairs and I got some other binding material or fabric that would go beautifully with this quilt Gave her three choices and I'll pop those pictures up here now initially. I thought I was done and She could come pick up the quilt and now I'm realizing oh, I need to do the binding so I asked her if she'd give me probably like an hour and a half or two hours to make the binding and sew the binding on and then she could come and pick up the quilt. Now, now it was a miscommunication on her, her part with me, but I was willing to accommodate anyway and fix it. And I just love this client so it didn't matter, but it all worked out. She got the quilt that day that she needed it and um, it was like a, a very good mistake because now that green kind of closed it off and this beautiful uh, berry, uh, beautiful berry red binding just made this quilt delicious. When you're working for people, there's this weird miscommunication and uh, you just try to work it out. You with your client and your client with you and my client really liked the quilt even with that mistake. And uh, I appreciate you and I'll see you later. Bye.